In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Today we celebrate the memorial of St. Wenceslaus, who was Duke of Bohemia and Martyr. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you came to gather the nations into the peace of God's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You came to bring light to those in darkness. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who taught the martyr St. Wenceslaus to place the heavenly kingdom before an earthly one, grant through his prayers that denying ourselves we may hold fast to you with all our heart, through Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Job. Job answered his friends and said, I know well that it is so. But how can a man be justified before God? Should one wish to contend with him? He could not answer him once in a thousand times. God is wise in heart and mighty in strength, who has withstood him and remained unscathed. He removes the mountain before they know it. He overturns them in his anger. He shakes the earth out of its place and the pillars beneath it tremble. He commands the sun, and it rises not. He seals up the stars. He alone stretches out the heavens and treads upon the crests of the sea. He made the bear and the Orion, the Pleiades and the constellation of the south. He does great things past finding out, marvelous things beyond reckoning. Should he come near me, I see him not. Should he pass by, I am not aware of him. Should he seize me forcibly, who can say him nay? Who can say to him, what are you doing? How much less I shall give him any answer or choose out arguments against him. Even though I were right, I could not answer him but should rather beg for what was due me. If I appealed to him and he answered my call, I could not believe that he would hearken to my words. The word of the Lord. Let my prayer come before you, Lord. Let my prayer come before you, Lord. Daily I call upon you, O Lord. To you I stretch out my hands. Will you work wonders for the dead? Will the shades arise to give you thanks? Let my prayer come before you, Lord. Do they declare your mercy in the grave, your faithfulness among those who have perished? Are your wonders made known to the darkness or your justice in the land of oblivion? Let my prayer come before you, Lord. But I, O Lord, cry out to you. With my morning prayer, I wait upon you. Why, O Lord, do you reject me? Why hide from me your face? Let my prayer come before you, Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. I consider all things so much rubbish that I may gain Christ and be found in him. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. As Jesus and his disciples were proceeding on their journey, someone said to him, 
I will follow you wherever you go. Jesus answered him, Foxes have dens and birds of the sky have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to rest his head. And to another he said, Follow me. But he replied, Lord, let me go first and bury my father. But he answered him, Let the dead bury their dead. But you go and proclaim the kingdom of God. And another said, I will follow you, Lord. But first, let me say farewell to my family at home. Jesus answered him, No one who sets a hand to the plow and looks to what was left is fit for the kingdom of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Uh, We're a little too far away from Christmas, otherwise I might just jump in to that great classic carol, Good King Winslas. That's who this is about uh, today, is uh, St. Winslas, who um, was the Duke of Bohemia. He lived from 903 until 935, lived till 28 years old. And um, as a Duke, of course, he was part of the noble society in Bohemia, which is is in present-day Czech Republic. His uh, father died at a relatively young age, and his paternal grandmother, Ludmila, uh, became the regent. His own mother, Dragomir, had become baptized at her marriage, but was from pagan origins. Her father was a pagan tribal chief, and after her husband's death, she became again resolutely pagan and anti-Christian. So when Ludmila became the regent, uh, uh, Wenceslas's mother, Dragomir, became very much opposed to her. Ludmilla, for her part, tried to protect Wenceslas's Christianity, protect his faith. She had him educated in the old Slavonic language. She kept her memories fondly of her own conversion by St. Cyril and Methodius, who we celebrated on Monday, and did her best to make sure that Wenceslas grew up strong and firm in the faith despite the influence of his mother. Ultimately, for her efforts, she too was considered a threat by Wenceslas's mother, Dragomir, and Dragomir had Ludmilla killed, assassinated. Ludmilla is a saint in her own right. Um, after, this, after this period of time, Wenceslas became only the more convicted in his Christian faith, having uh, had that strong guiding hand of his grandmother. He was known especially for his personal piety and for his almsgiving. So it was not that unusual for a Christian duke to give from the royal treasury, you know, the, the, the treasury that belonged, as it were, to the state already, and then redistribute it, as it were, in alms to the poor. Um, Wenceslas went far beyond that and gave from his own resources. Uh, There is a legend of him rising every night and in penance walking barefoot in the deep snow to the churches, to the prisons, to all those places where the poor and the destitute and the exiled lay and providing alms for them, giving of his resources, caring for them, only with the assistance of his young page boy, his young chamberlain. This is the legend that gave rise to the carol that tells exactly that story of the good King Winslesless who rose and walked in the snow. And when his page boy said, King Winslesless, it's freezing out here. Can we give up and go home? I just want to go back. Winslesless said, young boy, just simply walk in my steps and you will not have to endure the snow. So there's a beautiful imagery there, I think. Right, of this idea of Wenceslas trotting, trotting forth in the difficulty of walking barefoot in the snow and then looking at his page behind him who's following him, his little disciple, and saying, just walk in my steps and you'll be fine. Um, when we look at this gospel today of Jesus as he invites people to follow him, right, and people are eager to, to follow, yet understanding all that that's going to mean, Jesus knows, and perhaps some of his first disciples already know, that this is not going to be necessarily an easy journey, right? To, to even live out the mission that Jesus has given them to, to heal and give alms, to preach the gospel, to cast out demons, it involves danger and treachery, 
And as he reminds them, it may mean leaving at times your family behind, the things you love and the people you love most for the sake of the kingdom of God. But as you do it, you remember that every step that you walk, Jesus has already walked first, right? And this even means the difficulty and the challenge and the horror of death. King Wenceslas, for his part, when he had reached age 28, had become so fervent in his preaching of the gospel and his insistence on care for the poor in the name of Christ was threatened again by his younger brother, who was very much a disciple of his mother, Jagomir. And so his brother invited Wenceslas, seemingly in good faith, to celebrate the feast of of Cosmos and Damien, excuse me, Cyril and Methodius, and had them brought to celebrate this memorial. Sorry, I do mean Cosmos and Damien, excuse me. So he brought them over for Cosmos and Damien to celebrate it. Wenceslas was praying in the chapel, and three of Boleslas's his younger brother, his companions, attacked him, and Boleslas's younger brother struck him with a lance and killed him. So Wenceslas ultimately died for the faith, but as he did so, he knew he was simply not doing it on his own. He was not some pioneer. He was not the first to encounter difficulty. He knew that he was simply walking in the footsteps of the Lord. And likewise, when we encounter difficulty, humiliation, when we worry about our reputation, how will people think of us, when we worry about losing friends, losing family, what will people think if we live this life as fully and radically as possible, we have to know that we're just walking in steps that Christ has already walked, and that those steps, even as they lead to difficulty and death, ultimately lead to resurrection. Let us bring our prayers to our loving Father. We pray for the church that in the footsteps of King Wenceslas and all those who have suffered and martyred for the faith, we may give witness to the gospel with our lives, even in times of difficulty and trial. We pray to the Lord. We pray for those who lead us in our society, they may too care for those most in need, those whom Jesus has asked us to care for, especially the poor, the stranger, the oppressed, the imprisoned. We pray to the Lord. We pray for the intention of this Mass for Larry Davis. We pray to the Lord. Let us pause and remember all the prayers in our hearts. We pray to the Lord. We ask you, O good and loving Father, to hear our prayers. We make them through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through goodness we have received the bread we offer you. For the earth and work of human hands will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through goodness we have received the wine we offer you fruit of the vine and work of human hands have become our spiritual drink.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the offerings we bring in commemoration of Blessed Wenceslaus be acceptable to you, we pray, O Lord, so that they may be pleasing to your majesty, just as the shedding of this martyr's blood was precious in your sight. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For you are glorified when your saints are praised. Their very sufferings are but wonders of your might. In your mercy, you give ardor to their faith. To their endurance, you grant firm resolve. And in their struggle, the victory is yours through Christ our Lord. Therefore, all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song in adoration and we with all the host of angels cry out as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which should be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Blaise, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the blessed apostles, and all the saints who please you throughout the ages, who may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's offer each other a sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. May the sacred mysteries of which we have partaken, O Lord, we pray, give us that determination which made your blessed martyr Wenceslaus faithful in your service and victorious in suffering. Through Christ our Lord. Uh, just as a postscript, so Wenceslaus's mother, Dragomir, was never in her life repentant for having been responsible for the death of her mother-in-law and for conspiring with her younger son to have her other son, Wenceslaus, killed. But Wenceslaus's younger brother, who killed him, uh, Boleslaus, did in his life begin to repent after he began to notice all the miracles that were taking place when people visited his brother's tomb. So he did repent. And so it would be kind of neat to see a painting of like Wenceslaus and the page and his brother walking in the snow together. I'm not an artist, unfortunately, but that's sort of the image. Um, and as for the name, King Wenceslaus, he was always a duke in his life. It was Otto the I the emperor of the Holy Roman Empire, who named him king after his death, just to lift up his dignity and honor. My friends, the Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life.